Now it's time for one of my favorite scientific terms, the Magnus Effect. I am Magnus, and behold my effect. No, the Magnus Effect has to do with things that are spinning. Things like these cups. And here's a great little Magnus Effect flyer you can make at home. It's super easy. Get two styrofoam cups and tape them together at the bottoms using science tape. Then get some elastic bands and make a long one by tying them together. Take your elastic and you wrap it around the cup like this. Then hold the elastic on the bottom, remember, like that. And then let them go. They fly up and out. The reason why it goes up and stays in the air is because it's spinning, creating moving air over the top. Moving air has lower pressure, which means it's pushed up by the higher pressure underneath. And that is called the... It's coming. It's just... Oh, come on. Oh. Now, um, mm, the Magnus Effect. Yes. So, let's max it out. Magnus it out. See how much better that sounds? No, no, no. Max. Max it out. Check it out. Magnus Flyer 2.0 Stand Elastic Slingshot. Wrap it around. Remember, for the Magnus Effect to work, your cups need to be spinning this way. The front side rotating up. Oh, and there you have it, the Magnus Effect. Hi, Magnus, I'm out taking over the show. It is now Science Magnus. That is my effect, slightly improving the name of science TV shows. Science Magnus. Silita and I are maxing out our spinning top. Based on our small version, we decided to make one with as much mass as possible. So we got a 20 kilogram weight and welded it to a metal shaft. Will this work the same way? Well, let's look at the science. Why does a top spin? Well, let's start with Newton's first law, which is an object at rest tends to stay at rest, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. But the in motion has another part. That object also wants to go in a straight line. If you think of a bowling ball rolling along, it would need another force to act upon it to make it change direction. We say that a moving object has momentum. Now, a top doesn't go in a straight line, it spins around, but it still has momentum. It's an object in motion, and even though it's spinning, it still does want to go in a straight line. It's just that that straight line is here. We call this angular momentum. To make a top move this way, or that way, would take an outside force. So it stays upright as long as it has enough momentum. But when it slows down, there's less momentum and it becomes harder to resist external forces like gravity, which will eventually want to make it topple. Our top has a lot of mass, which means it'll have a lot of angular momentum when it gets spinning. It's just a matter of getting it spinning fast enough. So should we spin it? Yeah, let's spin it. Let's it's see if we can get it to work. Hey, okay. Spin, 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 spin. Are we gonna let go? In three? Wait, wait, wait. I can't get it. What? Go! Oh. Oh, wait, um, wait. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, uh, Not fast enough. We need something to help us get it spinning faster. faster. Maybe a rope? A rope, yeah. Grab a rope. That was my idea rope. too, a rope, because the small one uses a rope. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'll go grab a rope. So, wrapping the rope up. I'll let you wrap the rope okay. up. I'll get my holder back on top. Spin it counterclockwise. We attach the rope and wind it up. You want to make it super clean. This is some of the best coiled rope I've ever seen. I'm going to pull the rope. You're going to hold on to it, but I can't okay. pull really hard because you won't be able to hold it up. Because we don't have to pull hard. We just have to get it going fast. Yes. Silita keeps her hand on the block at the top, and I pull. Ready? Wait a minute. We'll get all the way. Oh. Whoa. It's spinning a lot better than I thought it would. <laughs> it's still spinning, but it's wobbling. Uh oh, careful. Oh, there it goes. It works, but just barely. It might spin better. It might spin straighter. Yeah. If we had it spinning, something help us spin it, spin it faster. Yes. Um, faster with more power. Faster with more power. Mm -hmm. This is a string. You can pull a string 
but you can't push a string. Well, you can. You can push a string. It, you really can. OK, quit it. Quit it. This little contraption works sort of like a baseball pitching machine, but in miniature. See, there are two motors here, and the wheels spin together to shoot things out this way. Things like this craft stick. Watch this. Whoa! Let's watch that again. Whoa! <laughs> but now, watch as I put a large loop of string through. What? <laughs> Pushing string. How does this happen? It... Hello? I don't suppose it's the Magnus effect? Uh, no, it's not the Magnus effect. No, that's, it's all right. I'll be in my lair if you need okay. me. Okay, right, bye. Right, where was I? Uh, I believe you were at, uh, the reason why this works is... Right, pushing string. How does this happen? It's all because of inertia. Check it out. The wheels are pushing the string through fast. It's got some weight and it's got some speed, which means it has some inertia. So when it goes this way, it wants to keep going this way. But it goes all the way to the end and then, because it's a loop, gets sucked back in this way, which means all of this inertia, you can sort of overcome gravity. Pushing string, science. You may have heard of cup stacking, and if not, you're missing out because not only is it fun, but it's something that kids are the world record holders at. And it's all about, you guessed it, stacking cups. Now, I have learned the pattern, but I'm not super fast at it. The world record is actually four seconds, and this is what that looks like. But you can't use camera tricks to help you. You have to practice to get faster. Now, you don't need to use official sports stacking cups, but if you don't know your science, some things will work against you. First of all, these cups have holes in the bottom, which makes them not very good as, you know, cups. Why do they have holes in the bottom? Because of science. You see, when you pull the cups apart, there is air that needs to get inside this cup. If you don't have a hole, like these ones, the air makes them stick together because there's nowhere for the air to get in except for underneath, and they will stick. Once again, let's compare. Also, you want the cups to have some weight because if they have some weight, they'll fall out of each other easily. If they don't have any weight, like, say, these styrofoam cups, it becomes very difficult. And <sighs> cup stacking with trash cans. OK, here we go. Even though these trash cans were heavy, they didn't have holes in the bottom, which means they stuck together. A lot. So why didn't I drill holes in the bottom of these trash cans? OK, and then. Well, I needed them in episode six to make 11 barrels of slime. Uh, OK. Two. No. But I eventually did it. And time. <sighs> Okay, there you go. The world record in trash can stacking. I know it's, it doesn't seem very fast, but first of all, that was hard. And second of all, I am the only one to do it. So therefore, I hold the record. <sighs> Sarah and I have already made a great dome out of oranges. Now we're maxing it out even more, but this time using... Watermelons! Watermelons! But not the giant watermelons, nope. the perfect spherical watermelons. They'll have to do pretty good to be better than the oranges. Definitely. All right, so we just do it the same way? Same way. All right. Let's do it. I'm sure I'm not telling you something you don't know when I say watermelons aren't great for building structures with. It's super wobbly. But the fact that we can make a structure using watermelons just proves how amazingly strong a geodesic dome really is. Have we 
done it? Yeah. We've done it! Yeah! Watermelon Dome! All right, we've got our gumdrop dome. We've got our orange dome. And we've got our, our watermelon, watermelon dome. dome. Those, these are awesome maxed out domes. What do we want to do to max it out even further? I think the watermelons were a little too heavy. Maybe we should go back to something lighter. Uh, so we can make it out of gumdrops, which will be yeah. like more complex. Exactly. And we won't get orange juice raining on our heads all day, yep. which is what happens with this one. Max Historica. This is Leonardo da Vinci. Ciao. One of the greatest inventors to ever live. And this is a pile of wood. One of the greatest piles of wood to ever be piled. Now, Leonardo is going to construct a bridge out of this wood. This is Leonardo's hammer. One of the worst hammers in the history of hammers. Now, Leonardo must construct his bridge using no tools at all. No, that hasn't been invented yet. How will Leonardo construct a bridge using no tools at all? Well, he is one of the greatest scientific minds. <laughs> oh, um, one of the greatest scientific minds in history. <sighs> oh, each piece of wood is supported by another. And that's what's known as Leonardo da Vinci's self supporting bridge. Leonardo's done it. But there is a flaw in the bridge. It's very strong when you apply downward force. But not so strong when you push on it sideways. Fortunately, Leonardo can devote his great mind to figuring out how to clean up his workshop. Haha! <laughs> Join me, one of the greatest narrators in the history of narration, next time on More Max Historica. I have a pot. Why do I have a pot? I didn't have a pot when I went through the portal. Is someone somewhere missing a pot? Or did it just create this pot out of nothing? Huh. <laughs> hey, hey, Sarah. Hey, hi. How are you doing? Good. Sarah from Mad Size, you're going to help me make some slime. Yes, I actually brought some. Oh, this isn't this isn't slime. This is a pot lid. Hey. Oh. Well, uh, at least we have a set. Doesn't answer any questions, though. And I guess we're going to have to make some more slime. Definitely. What kind of slime do you want to make? Uh, what do you mean, what kind? Is there more than one kind? Oh, yeah, there are tons of different kinds of slime with lots of different ingredients and recipes. Oh, I only know the one. Can you show me all the others? Of course. Let's go make some right now. Okay, great. Awesome. Come on down to Sal's Science Shop and see me, Sal, while you shop for science. This week only, Sal's one-of-a-kind, once-a-year polymer sale. 50 to 75 percent off anything made of polymers. Rubber? That's a polymer. Polystyrene. When you're eating your next meal, I recommend some polypropylene. Low-density polyethylene. High-density polyethylene. You want some polytetrafluoroethylene? We got it. We've even got polychlorotrifluoroethylene. Did I even know how good a deal this is? Cause you're not gonna find, you're not gonna find that kind of deal just like every day. But hold the phone. Polymers aren't just plastics. Rayon, nylon, Teflon, you name the lawn, we got it on. Sale. What do we want? Polymers. When, when do we, we want, want them? them? Anytime during normal business hours. Wool, silk, even cotton. Polymers, polymers, polymers. Pol Polymers, polymers, polymers. Word has lost all meaning. Glue, paint, umbrella fabric, oh yeah. Carpet, you bet that's on sale. Roberta, I'm running out of sale signs. Buy it and I'll put it in a plastic bag, also made of polymers. Seriously, Roberta, we can't have a sale on everything. Oh, hey, hey, even you, even me, the proteins in our bodies, even our DNA, all polymers. <laughs> so come on down to Sal's Science Shop and get a great deal on your polymers for a limited time. I mean, it'd have to be a limited time, right, Roberta? Because, I mean, I can't discount everything in the store to 75% off. How am I going to make any money? I mean, are we still rolling? Oh. 
100 different kinds of slime. Yes, it's gonna be so much fun, but we're not gonna make 100 today. Yeah, I know, we're just gonna do our top favorites. Yeah, it's gonna be super great. All right, what are we starting with? So our first slime we're starting with today is some really cool molding slime. Now this slime, actually, if you leave it out overnight, it'll harden and you can make an imprint of whatever you like. So here, we made an imprint of our little uh, tool there. So we're gonna look at a little bit more liquidy slime, starting with this one over here, which I believe you already know about. This is cornstarch mud. Exactly. You hold this. Sounds good. I'm gonna good. hold this and we're gonna try pouring it. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. so. See, it's like, it's like a liquid, but then you do it fast, it's like a solid. All right, what's next? Over here, we have some other really awesome types of slime. So right over here, we have some crunchy slime. Crunchy slime? Exactly. Why is it crunchy? Now, it's crunchy because we've actually added a few beads inside of it to make it crunchy. Uh -huh. so this is some really cool, awesome slime. Here, take half. And you can feel the beads as you get to stretch it out. It's so cool. This is uh, this one is a little harder to clean. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'll just do that. All right, so what's next? So next we have some really cool glow-in-the-dark slime. Glow-in-the-dark slime? Yeah, it's so awesome. Ooh, look at how much it glows. That glows a lot. That's super glowy slime. So to do the different kinds of slime, we need the polymer. Yes. And then the thing that sticks the polymers together. Exactly. So the glue is the polymer. Glue is the polymer. And the starch is the thing that bonds it. Yes. Uh-huh. Very cool. And then you put the thing in that makes it the, the kind of slime. Yes, right before you add the bonding component, because if we keep uh, adding stuff after it's already made, it unfortunately won't be able to take it. So we add our powder before we add our starch in this situation. Uh, should we go on to the next thing? <laughs> yeah, let's move on to more, more slime. slime. 